Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're going to look at everything I do to get the cleanest possible audio on my DaVinci Resolve videos. First thing I need to do is make sure that the room I'm working in has an acceptable noise floor. That means even though it's 100 degrees outside in Texas, time to turn the air conditioner off. The next thing I do is pull out my extra elite, uber expensive foam. Got this on Amazon. It's probably 10 bucks for 12 panels, and that was probably expensive. But what it allows me to do is set my condenser mic back into a virtual sound booth. This helps me avoid the noise I've got from a switch fan down below the desk, as well as my server sitting in the corner. There's only so far I'm going to go shutting up and shutting down everything every time I do a video. The next changes I need to make, I make on the computer. Let's take a look at those. The first thing I have to do on my computer is make sure my fans are running at a quiet speed. I'm cutting them in half with a custom temperature curve that I've set in the IQ software. This dramatically reduces the amount of noise they make. The next thing I have to do is set up my voiceover track so that I can re record with my condenser microphone. To do that, I've added a new voiceover track. I can do that by right-clicking, choosing Add Track. I can add mono, stereo, all the way up to 7.1 sound. I've used stereo in this case, even though my condenser mic is a mono mic. Now, to get this channel ready, this track ready, to be able to take the input, I have to patch it into the channel. I take my microphone, select my channel left and right, and click Patch. This tells DaVinci Resolve that I'd like to take anything that comes into the microphone and run it to the second channel, the channel called VoiceOver. Now, the confusing part here is why is it not showing? It looks like it should be showing up here in my scopes, but no, you have to click Record. At that point, it knows to open up the channel to the microphone and listen to it. However, that doesn't record your audio. To do that, you need to hit the round record button here. Now that I'm recording, I'm talking directly into the condenser mic and recording to channel two. You may think, wow, this looks pretty easy. It is until you try and understand what's happening with your audio. To show you that, we're going to take a look behind the scenes here with your audio signal. The first thing I'll do is jump into Fairlight FX by clicking the plus sign on the Tracks Effects panel. I choose Fairlight FX, which are those that come with DaVinci Resolve, and I choose the vocal channel at the very bottom. This vocal channel gives me a lot of power in one panel. The first thing I can do is set a high pass, which will automatically drop extremely low tones, much like you'd hear in a low rumble or hum. The next thing I want to do is make sure to accentuate the audio for my vocals. And to do that, I'm going to come in and pull up, so this increases the volume of the frequencies in the range from about 400 to 1200. Finally, I'm going to set a high frequency section, and you can adjust these. Notice they change uh, either the high point here or I can adjust it down with the toggles. The next thing you can do is a compressor. This is extremely helpful if you're getting a lot of pops or uh, blowing out, coming in really hot across your microphone, hitting the red quite a lot. What you can do is set a noise threshold, and at a specific decibel level, it will start to trim that volume back. Notice at a relatively low decibel level. I've got a threshold set currently. I want to move that higher so that it gets past what I want to normalize my audio at, which is going to be around 9 or 10 decibels, uh, negative 9 or 10 decibels. And then I can choose how hard it attacks at given volumes. So it will clip from, if a volume is actually here around 20 decibels, it would clip it down to negative five. If you do this a little too aggressively, it becomes apparent when you're listening to the audio that there's compression near the top. However, if you do it right, it saves your earphone listeners 
and they never know it happened. It sounds pretty good. I'm going to click S here so I can solo it, meaning only give me the audio from this track. Due to the work that we did on the noise floor, turning off the air conditioning, toning down the fans on the computer, turning off the air filter, and setting up the extra, extra expensive, awesome noise booth around my microphone, I've been able to reduce that noise floor to be quite minimal. However, let's show how to reduce any noise that's associated with that. I would again use the effects panel on my channel, choose Fairlight FX, and I may look to hit noise reduction. Now there's a couple modes here in noise reduction. The best one that I've found for speech is the auto speech mode. And you can use this to understand not just what you're recording here, but to have it show just the noise that it may detect as it's doing its job. Let me turn on those fans again and we can see if we can get a good look at what it sounds like. Here we are with a pretty demonstrable noise floor. You see the purple lines. That's the noise that the auto speech mode is detecting is not my voice. I can look at it and listen to it only by checking the box there. You can hear that and you know that's what it's removing from your footage. As a general rule, I try and lower the noise floor all the way down as low as I can get and clean it up in post as minimal as possible. Otherwise, your voice starts to sound auto-tune robotic. Now, your mileage may vary because you've got a different microphone, different computer, different environment, and it produces a different soundscape. But if you use that standard workflow, you'll get passable audio for YouTube every time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below and have a great day.